How do you write a bestseller? That was Land Rover's problem when it came to creating the second generation version of its runaway success story, the Range Rover Evoque, a car that now accounts for a third of the brand's total sales. It's a fashionable yet capable proposition that has fundamentally changed the premium mid-sized SUV market. Rivals now have to contend with an evolved version that features a more efficient range of diesel and petrol engines, including electrified and mild hybrid technology. Plus, there's smarter styling, superb ride quality, extra off-road ability, and more interior space thanks to an all-new PTA platform. As a result, if you want an SUV of this kind, this one's still a pretty complete proposition. Don't be misled by the lightly evolved looks. An awful lot of work has gone in to evolve this second generation L551 series of Oak model, especially under the skin. As soon as you set off in it, there's a heftier, more solid feel than the previous car provided. And that's complemented by an altogether more absorbent quality of ride from a redesigned suspension setup with mechanicals that are derived from larger Range Rovers. The much stiffer premium transverse architecture chassis helps here, a platform which also makes possible the fitment of a fresh range of 2-litre petrol and diesel engines, plus an all-new 1.5-litre PHEV petrol-electric plug-in power plant. An entry-level D150 diesel manual front-driven variant carries over its conventional engineering from the previous model. Beyond that, though, all the mainstream units are mated to auto transmission and all-wheel drive, and they all use current fashionable mild hybrid technology to recover braking energy for use during low speed driving and to boost performance when you're accelerating. The engine name uh, designates the uh, horsepower with buyers choosing between P200, P250 and P300 petrol units or more likely one of the diesels, a mild hybrid version of the D150 plus D180 and D240 versions of the same unit. All the engines are slightly hobbled by this Evoque's relatively heavy weight. Upper spec versions can weigh in at close to a couple of tonnes, which is a lot for a small SUV. But in some ways, the solid structure's hefty feel rather fits with this Evoque's evolved maturity into more of a fully-fledged Range Rover product. It doesn't help running cost efficiency, of course. The D240 variant we're trying here has returns typical of the diesel lineup, up to 40.4 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 163 grams per kilometer of any DC rated CO2. Rivals do do better, but predictably, none of those competitors can hold a candle to this Evoke's prowess on the rough stuff. Uh, you'll damage any one of them if you attempt to get anywhere near what this little Range Rover can do off piste. That's thanks to 212 mils of ground clearance, 600 mils of wading depth capability, and an evolved terrain response to driving mode system, which sets the car up perfectly for the kind of ground you're traveling over. You don't change a winning formula. The way the original Evoque looked was the major reason why so many people bought it. Stylist Massimo Fraschella and his team did initially design a more radical concept for this second generation model, but it was quickly discarded on the basis of continual customer feedback that the established shape should merely be evolved. Perhaps though, with a little extra touch of Range Rover this time around. That earlier L538 model was originally destined to wear a Land Rover badge. This one though, uh, which carries over only its door hinges from its predecessor, gains more than a hint of the maturity that marks out the next Range Rover model up in the line, the mid-sized Velar. What's more significant though is what you can't see. Now Land Rover is keen to talk about this Mark II model's premium transverse architecture platform uh, that makes possible the installation of its fresh mild hybrid engine range. But it's a touch disappointing to find that to be a predominantly steel structure which has actually added quite a lot of weight to this car. Size of course is important, 70% of likely evoked buyers are urban based and they were clear that they didn't want the previous model's 4.37 meter length to grow. So Land Rover had to satisfy them while at the same time addressing the most frequently criticized issue with that old car, that of cramped interior space. The obvious solution was to move the front and rear axles further apart, creating this L551 series model's 20 millimeter longer wheelbase, which is claimed has made a big difference to cabin space inside. 
Let's take a look. For sure, it's a big improvement. Once cramped and blandly trimmed, this lighter, larger, smarter cabin now at last has the feel of a fully-fledged Range Rover. The much higher quality of fit and finish helps here, as does a more mature level of design that includes the introduction of this pistol grip F-type sports car derived shifter and this much wider center console between the seats. Plus, of course, there are all these screens. Land Rover's Touch Pro Duo setup being standard fit if you avoid the cheaper trim levels with wondrous graphics and impressive configurability. The Solihull brand's finally got around to including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring too. And where these monitors feature, they're complemented by an equally customizable 12.3 inch interactive driver display, replacing the usual instrument binnacle dials. Finding an ideal driving position is easy, and that's helped by the fact that you sit really quite commandingly by class standards. And there are lovely optional touches like uh, this clever ClearSight virtual rear view mirror. Time to take a seat in the rear. Of course, it is what it is. No matter how much you extend the length between the axles of a car like this, there's only so much legroom that you're gonna be able to create. And the Evokes cause here isn't helped by the lack of the kind of uh, slide and recline function for this rear bench that you'd get in a rival Audi Q3 or a BMW X1 model. And also on much smaller SUVs, actually. Uh, still, this Land Rover now makes better use of the room it has. It's now easier to slide your feet under the front chairs and there's 20 millimeters more knee room, and that's helped by these uh, scalloped out seat backs. The luggage area, once it's revealed, is 10% larger than before. Land Rover quotes a figure of 591 litres. That is misleading because instead of being based around the usual floor to parcel shelf measurement, that references floor to ceiling dimensions. So it's probably more relevant to tell you that golf clubs now fit in sideways, as well a couple of suitcases stored lengthwise alongside each other. Ultimately, what we have here is a welcome step forward in Evoke development. It'll please those who like the original, but it might also charm folk who didn't. Whichever camp you're in, if you need to match style with substance in a small SUV of this sort, it's hard to think of a better place to start your search.